Hey folks, Adrian Amos here with a new feature that just popped up in preview. Pretty excited about this one because it solves a long-standing challenge for me. We have new settings available to configure local user group membership in endpoint security. It takes me to this wonderful article right here. What it's doing is it's giving us now a direct interface within the endpoint management console to add users to specific local groups on endpoints. And what I say when I say add, what I mean is we can actually do add and replace or add and augment, it can actually also do remove. We have been able to do this kind of stuff in the past. This isn't actually a revolutionary capability. But as you can see in the document here, if I can find the statement again, uh, it used to have to be done in PowerShell script, OMA URI policies, or GPO. Now, I'm not going to drain the article right here. Uh, we've all done plenty of stuff through PowerShell. We're fairly competent and, and comfortable with how we can come into the devices area and assign scripts to run at machines, right? It works very well. Uh, but what I had done in the past for years was actually building a, a custom profile and the configuration profiles to create the local users on the machines. And it worked very well, but it literally always reported that it was in error state. And so I'm pretty excited about this because now I can simply come to endpoint security, uh, come down to uh, account protection, hit create policy, choose Windows 10 or later. Uh, and now we're gonna see this local group membership preview. And while that's coming up with create, I wanna jump over and talk about how we did this in, in years gone by, okay? So I'm in the group policy management console in my active directory. Uh, the only thing that's in it is this, uh, space here for under security settings under the computer configuration to do restricted groups. Now, there is no such thing as a local group called Power Tacos, right? I could create one, but I could put anything I want into this and, and have it try to take effect on these machines. If it's administrators, it's gonna impact the administrators group. If it's power users, it's gonna affect the power users group. Uh, so there's no guardrails on this. And what this also does, the other challenge that is brought about by doing this through GPO is that the effects of this are not cumulative. Restricted groups, when we add a group to this and we type administrators, again, no guardrail. There's nothing to check to make sure that's a real thing. We come in here, we add a user to this. This is an explicit assignment. This is an add and replace. This is also a remove anything that is already there. This takes total precedent over anything else that may exist on that group, on that object. And I have seen that be devastating. So the other method available to me in a GPO is to go to group policy preferences, right? And come down to local users and groups. And this actually works a lot more cleanly, right? Because in this case, we can actually come in here, uh, hit uh, new local group assignment, right? We're gonna make changes to the way this is gonna work. We can do uh, create, replace, update, delete. Uh, we can apply this to common groups that already exist in these environments, right? So we've got a lot more guardrails in this space, but what we still have to have is domain controller line of sight to the device, right? And in this whole hybrid work, work from home, you know, assuming that users are always getting in and checking these things, uh, it, it's not always a safe assumption. Plus, when we're doing things like, you know, remote provisioning for machines, we want to be able to get these users up and know that we can get our, our environmental security controls in place on these machines kind of at day one. That is not the case here. So I'm going to create a, just a thing here and I'm going to call it LUGS, Local User Group uh, Security, right? Hit next on this guy. And now look at this, my local groups are already predefined in here. This is fantastic. I don't have to worry about it. I can come in here, I can choose multiple groups if I want to. Uh, I can select all, I can select none. I can say my local administrators, I'm going to add and replace the current content or I'm just gonna add an update. I can choose users and groups. Now come into here and this is gonna allow me to select objects from my Azure Active Directory. If that's not working for me, if that's not my jam, I can come down here and do manual add users. And this is where I can start typing in SIDs if I want to. And the cool thing is I don't get error messages. It just works. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a great day and I will catch you next time.